We're back in the shop, back home from LZ World Tour California. It was amazing. If you guys haven't seen the recap video, go check it out. We still have some of the official LZ World Tour shirts remaining. Super, super cool design with the new E36. Got T-Pain and his Mustang on there. Sick design on lzmfg.com. Get one before it's too late. We're jumping right back into some JDM goodness. Johan, what's going on today? You guys missed the first half of this whole ordeal, but the new oil pan came in, so we're gonna go ahead and put it on and get this car back and running so we don't drop the uh, oil pressure. All right, so little backstory, little backstory. We never got around to like fully tuning this car and it still had some stuff to clean up. I had Freddie come over and he helped me uh, actually get a lot more out of the V cam on this motor. The car picked up like 100 horsepower almost everywhere in the curve except for peak. So the car was like torque monster now, but in doing so we realized in the logs that it was severely dropping oil pressure. Now this car had a stock baffle in it with a stock pan and I think it's just pulling so many G's that it would literally starve the sump for oil and I was heavily advised not to drive it anymore. So it's been sitting on the back burner until I could get a pan with a proper baffle and what we're gonna be doing is a Nismo baffle that we've had really good success with has these little flap doors so essentially when you're driving the sump always has oil and then the oil can go in through here but when it sloshes it pushes up against the door so it can't evacuate super simple the nismo piece is really nice little kit um and uh then we can take it for some rides johan hasn't been in this car no one's been in this car since it's been retuned i would say it's probably one of my, the, the craziest experience cars to drive i think just because it's light it's all-wheel drive and it makes so much torque that it's just like you're, you're rowing gears. It's like my Evo, but scaled up. So um, I'm excited for you guys to see this thing in action. The sponsor of today's video is BetterHelp. And whether you guys have your own business, you're a workaholic, or you just have a lot of stuff going on in your life, I'm sure you're aware that mental health is extremely important. Now where BetterHelp comes in, they're gonna connect you to a licensed therapist who's trained to listen is gonna give you helpful, unbiased advice. All you have to do is go to their site and you can use my code betterhelp.com forward slash AdamLZ and you're gonna answer a few easy questions so that BetterHelp can match you to a professional that has years of experience helping people that are going through things just like yourself. I feel like a big hurdle for a lot of people with talking to a therapist is having to take the time to physically go drive somewhere and meet with someone and the beauty of BetterHelp, you do it from your phone, from your computer, phone call, video call, messaging, whatever is the most convenient and comfortable for you. You'll usually be matched with a therapist within 48 hours, so you can get started fast. Let BetterHelp get you connected to a therapist that can support you, all from the comfort of your own home. Just visit the link betterhelp.com forward slash AdamLZ or choose AdamLZ during checkout and I'll get you a special discount on your first month. I wanna give a massive thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video and I'm hopeful that they'll be able to help out a lot of you guys as well. All the bolts are stripped from the RTV. Just a tip, if you're putting an oil pan in, you wanna get rid of the RTV, especially the one that hangs on the top of the bolt. Because when you go to try to put this in, the RTV will bottom out with the surface of whatever you're installing and put pressure against it and it won't torque properly. And I see in some cases where you will strip the bolt out or the, the threads in the block or whatever you are trying to install and then you got a bigger problem. It's tedious, but it's one of those steps that if you know you did it and you did it right when you put it on, you know, when you took one less step, one more step to make sure that you don't have a leaky oil pan or a broken stud or a broken thread. Yeah. Because that's a pain, yes.
All right, we're buttoning last things up so we can test the new baffle and the new extended sump. Uh, before we do though, I wanted to show you the data from what happened before. So you guys will have this over the screen, but I'm gonna look at it so I'm able to reference it while I'm talking. On our beautiful Link ECU, I guess I'll show here, but I'll blow it up on the screen too. You can see RPM's going up. Oil pressure's looking great, getting close to like 85, 90. Not crazy high, but not crazy low. But the problem is up here, you see it just tank down to as low as 45. This is first gear. Second gear, it does the same thing, but even sooner. And then third gear, it does the same thing, but even at a sooner RPM. It should be just holding up here like this and the oil pressure is going shoop, shoop, shoop. So it's either sloshing or it was just starving the pan completely of oil. On these things, it is an issue with the oil getting stuck in the head and not draining back. Drain back helps. But knowing that I wanna be able to drive this car um, spiritedly on back roads and stuff, it's really important to have a baffled sump and an Isbo baffle works really well to prevent it from starving on certain corners. Got Booth the tuner, riding co-pilot. He's told me repeatedly that this car not fast. I don't really think, dude. It's really good. I know it's fast. No, but it's like it's like life-changingly fast. Life-changing shit. Well, oh, the steering wheel's so much lighter now. We got used to driving a safari car. Safari car's light too now. Relax. I know, but that thing's got big wheels. Damn, what was that? Jeez. What was that? Maybe I'll do a pull here real quick before we go out on the road, just to make sure everything's good. Okay. I want to make sure that the all-wheel drive is working and then the oil pressure is good, so I'm going to have you do a log. This thing makes some different noises, huh? <laughs> they blow off the I miss this car. Do a little one, too. I couldn't tell if all the drivers were working around. That sick. Yeah. It might be in real drive right now. All right. Oil pressure now. Like Hell yeah. Yeah, it doesn't tank at all. Yep. I love to see it. I can't tell. It doesn't feel like it's working. Oh, I don't like that at all. Is it working? Test the pump, just need a quick little bleed, so we should have all-wheel drive now. Right, let's see if we get all-wheel drive now. <laughs> I would say so. Yeah. A little pork to the neck there, guy. Just you wait, bud. Just you wait. This thing gets down. Oh, that was bad. We'll redo that. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Oh, I think something's tight. What'd you say? I don't think something's tight. Can one you down here? One, two clunk? Yeah. I think it's the trans. That was loud. It could just have been the bushing moving. Maybe. We'll do another. I feel some, some of this juice. Damn, I forget how high this thing revs. I was kind of short shifting it before. sucks because I feel like the camera won't do justice how much better this car drives now. Like the mid-range, everything, it feels like a proper 2.8 where before it felt like a 2.6 and I thought it was just the turbo but we just didn't have enough V-cam in it. That's crazy. Yeah, you can add up to I think like 50 degrees of like advance on it and we and Freddie basically was able to reconfigure it to run actually just like a VVTi 2J wow. and that, that like gives you better control over it I guess. A little bit above my pay grade to completely understand what it did. But. <laughs> It's really good. Yeah, she uh, she rips. How's oil pressure looking? That wasn't much. I think we're good. I think our first test proved it, but you can click the log and I'll, I'll review when we get back. I think one of my favorite things about this car is it's just so it's so quiet, but like ridiculously quick. Yeah. The fact that you can leave that hard is pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, uh, the fact that this car did a, I think it was a one, 
one five, in 60 the foot is crazy. on the street. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. On the street. We need enough power for it to be fun, you know what I mean? This yeah. is just like... <laughs> well, I feel like for a GTR, it's the perfect fastness. Like, if you, like 400 horsepower in a GTR feels slow. Yeah. Because it, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Yeah. It has so much grip and traction. Like, this is the, the perfect, like, power to grip, I feel like, where it's not... It's not lazy, it's still spooly, but it's still fast enough. That, I mean, it's a 10 second car. One more launch, because why not? All right. You can't ship for shit. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> it's my problem when it comes to Skylines. <laughs> it's a good rig. Oh, this is what you'll have, Sean. This is a 2 AV cam motor. Oh, no way. Yeah. This is exactly what your car will feel like, but probably better, because you won't have like a prehistoric yeah, turbo. Yeah, what turbo you want to put? Uh, G30, well, how much power you want to make? Six or seven? G35 right. 900. That should be. That is your jam. Yeah, I love that. That on a 2 AV cam motor would feel like spicier than the Chaser. Uh, That'd be good. The Chaser feels tense. Actually, it would feel just like the Chaser. <laughs> Chill, bro. Well, no, because it's it's similar, right? The Chaser's three liter with VVTi, so if yeah. you have a two eight True. with VCam, RBs don't make as much low end grunt, but they're happier up top. Yeah. So you just run a big AR and like a medium sized cam. That'd be like it'd be so snappy. Yeah, I want that. One last launch. <laughs> How did you know I was gonna do another launch? How did you know? Because you're going so slow. <laughs> many cars that kind of like I can't I can't talk while I'm driving this car you gotta be, you gotta be that focused yeah that one two shit full money I'm Hell stoked yeah. about that yeah. uh yeah I think this car made like 650 but like a lot of torque up you, there the yeah torque. they know because I'll I probably put it on the screen right now sure. I'm stoked to build my skate park Woo! that's what's going on off camera right now look at that wood dude I got pressure treated so we can put it outside too how are we gonna move it the wood once you build it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's... I mean, remember you talking about getting shitty forms. What? Uh, I see a shitty one. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about like, you either go to Home Depot and you get all the wood yourself so you can pick it out or you get it dropped off. It looks like the majority of it's okay. Yeah. It's the plywood that's normally yeah. screwed. So to have a direct comparison to the log before, you can see this is the one, two, three. And over here, this purple line is oil pressure. There's no more tanks. It just kind of holds. All the gears stays about uh peak of let's say like 80 90 psi and just stays there where before we were seeing this crazy tank so it worked not the craziest procedure or process or thing to try to diag kind of knew what it was right off the rip but it's still cool to have a problem solve it and be able to see results instantly um this car i don't necessarily have any crazy plans in the near future other than driving and enjoying it maybe change around the wheels or something if there's anything particular you guys do want to see with it let me know it's a monster um, I feel like video doesn't portray the difference of how the car drives now, but I'm so much more excited to drive it before we just never really had time to dial it in. Now that it's dialed and I know oil pressure is good, I can just enjoy it. AC's ice cold, it's a good rig.